Welcome to part four of our live training session here, working with our Link G4X plug and play system on a Honda K series engine. In this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at doing our low cam part throttle tuning. We have a lot of things to discuss, looking at fuel spark and variable cam tuning within our part throttle conditions. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session. In this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to dial in our part throttle cruise area of operation. Now in an alpha end strategy, that's going to, if we take a look here at our main field table, we're gonna find that's going to be between zero to let's say roughly 40% throttle. So we wanna be able to calibrate this area of our table. Now we know idle is gonna be zero to 1% and we've essentially dialed these values in, but off idle, so let's say three to 40%. This area right here all the way out across all their RPM span is what we need to deal with. We're gonna be going and breaking down how to dial in the full throttle. So let's say from 60 to 100% throttle. So higher load, higher throttle angle situations in the next tutorial doing our low cam tuning. But this is gonna be the area where we spend the majority of our time driving. So we wanna make sure that this is going to be dialed in as best as possible. What we're gonna do in this tutorial is watch what the closed loop correction is showing us in its adjustments. So how much our closed loop lambda fuel correction is making adjustments, either adding or subtracting fuel. That's gonna tell us how much we need to adjust our areas within our fuel table. Now there's multiple ways to go in and calibrate and tune your main VE table. Uh, we can use the mixture map, we can use the quick tune function. I personally just like the data log and play it back and manually update, update the changes based on what my closed loop correction is showing it's doing as I'm driving through certain areas of the table. Any of those ways will be valid to dial everything in. I just personally like to look through the log uh, because I'm always watching for other parameters or other details as I'm going in and doing my main V table tuning. Now, a couple things about this. We have a very conservative spark timing table. So if we jump in here to our spark area, we've set our spark timing in the part throttle anywhere between 15 to let's say roughly 20 degrees. And this is gonna be sufficient for doing our part throttle area of operation for right now. Conservative spark timing, we don't have to worry about knocker pre-ignition occurring. This allows us to focus all of our efforts on dialing in our airflow model, getting that sorted out. Then we can come back into our spark timing table here and optimize this after we've dialed in our airflow model. So we're gonna learn how we can find or reach maximum brake torque using our mainline chassis dyno. Now, I'm not gonna get into setting all of that up right now, We'll talk about that later in the tutorial once we've nailed down our airflow model 100%. So the order of operations here, always go after your airflow model first, then go after your spark timing. Now, this leads us to the third topic of our tutorial here, and that's gonna be our variable cam timing. We haven't touched that yet. We haven't even went in and populated a table value for our variable cam target for our K-series engine. Let's jump in and talk about that because we're gonna preset our values in our VCT scheduling or the variable cam control and uh, that's gonna give us the ability to make sure that we've dialed everything in here properly in part throttle. So in our VVT area, we have a VVT inlet target table one and two. This is gonna be low and high cam. So table one, low cam, table two, high cam. Obviously in this case, we're doing low cam tuning. Uh, this is gonna be non VTEC tuning. In this case, we've set our table up here based on throttle position, zero, 10, 40, 60, 80, 100 is our break points in the table. And we're going between 1,000 to 7,500 within our RPM break points. Now, when we're talking about part throttle operation, we have to go and consider a few things when we're setting up a variable cam control table. Generally speaking, right about 2,500, about 5,000 RPM, that's the kind of RPM sweet spot for operating our engine in part throttle cruise conditions. In this area here from roughly 25 to roughly 5, 5,500, we're gonna go ahead and preset our values here at 30 degrees variable cam target. Now we have to be mindful of our actual throttle position that we're placing in the table here because it will change in terms of the variable cam targeting with different cams based on your throttle position in this alpha end strategy. What I wanna do is actually go in and quickly just add, edit and add another breakpoint at 5% throttle and I'll explain why I'm doing that in here in just one second. Let's do that. So I'm clicking on the table, clicking X, going into the TPS main and just adding a 5% breakpoint. Now looking at this, when I have OEM cams, I wanna make sure that as I'm coming off throttle, so coming back into 0% throttle, for example here, I'm gonna make sure the variable cam target is zero. I want the variable cam to rotate back to the neutral or no overlap position. And when I go back on the throttle, I'll allow it to go in and rotate towards that desired variable cam target of roughly 30 degrees from 2,500 here up to, let's say, 5,500. So in this range right here, we're gonna go and put a value of 30 degrees. 30 degrees represents the sweet spot for both economy and torque output and throttle response for any K-Series engine, regardless of whatever cams you have installed. That seems to be always the sweet spot. Now, 
when we're talking about OEM cams. We have to be considerate of what we're doing here in this transitory area between zero and 10% throttle. At 5% throttle, I'm gonna put my values here at 15 degrees. This is gonna allow me again, when I'm off throttle, 0% here, it's gonna target zero degrees, it's gonna put me back to the neutral or no overlap position of the cam movement. Then when I start to give it some throttle, it'll start to ramp my variable cam targeting and go up to 30 degrees here once I get up to 10% throttle. This again will give me economy, good throttle response, and more importantly, good drivability as I'm allowing the cam to rotate back and forth. This is how Honda does it in their control strategy for the variable cam with OEM cams. Now, if you have an aftermarket cam, this is gonna be dangerous. That can actually put a lot of stress on your timing chain tensioner. With OEM cams, Honda's designed the cams to not have an aggressive ramp rate, which puts stress and strain on the tensioner and the timing chain. So when you have an aftermarket cam, any aftermarket cam, if you're gonna be targeting 30 degrees here, part throttle, again, that's usually what I go and target, you're gonna be setting all of your values here to 30 degrees, so we're gonna be finding the table's gonna look something like this, so shift V here, something like this. So you come off the throttle, on the throttle, you're always at that cam target of 30 degrees. You don't wanna go and allow it to rotate back and rotate back and forth between zero and 30. That rotation of the cam, along with the ramp rate of the cam, kills the chain, kills the timing chain tensioner. So in this case, I don't have that situation. I have OEM cams. I'm gonna set it to zero, and then I'm gonna set this to 15 degrees. I'm not gonna populate anything higher here in the 80 to 100% throttle range. We're gonna look at that and doing the full throttle calibration process in the next tutorial, and I'll talk about all the details at that point in time as to how to actually dial it in for our full, thr full throttle area of operation. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.